So what really causes heart attack and stroke? Is it diabetes? Well, uh, how about sleep apnea or sleep disturbances? How about high blood pressure? Uh, poor diet? Obesity? Lack of exercise? Insulin resistance? Dental infections? Um, <clears throat> but this is an important discussion because once we know what causes something, then we know how to prevent it. So let's talk about that in a few minutes and then what we can do with the information we gather from that discussion. This is Ford Brewer with PrevMed, Heart Attack, Stroke, Disability, Cancer Prevention. Prevention uh, takes discipline. Sometimes it's difficult, but it's not nearly as difficult as, uh, as surgery or like a a coronary artery bypass or even worse decades of disability like you can, you many people have with heart failure or um, uh, dementia so let's look at this <clears throat> this is a, a slide looking at things from the uh, side the perspective of someone with type 2 diabetes as you can see here they're clearly at risk let me get a a pen here for a pointer. <clears throat> Folks with type 2 diabetes are clearly at risk for, well, dyslipidemia. That's one of those uh, words that's too big and ostentatious in the medical scientific community. It just means bad. Lipid means fat in the blood. So a bad uh, cholesterol panel, basically. A uh, bad cholesterol panel, and you start getting increased risk for heart attack and stroke. Hypertension, high blood pressure. Uh, again, higher blood pressure can cause risk for heart attack and stroke, and obesity does as well. So, <clears throat> we know that uh, diabetes causes increased risk for heart attack and stroke. Well, this is looking at it from the perspective of someone with obstructive sleep apnea. Um, you get, with uh, sleep apnea, you get drug-resistant high blood pressure. You get obesity congestive heart failure, diabetes, coronary artery disease. Um, uh, before we talk about it, let's just gather a little bit more data and continue to look. Okay. Oh, this is from the perspective of our dental crowds out there. The facts are your mouth talks to your body and your body talks to your mouth. So uh, dental infections set you up for heart attack, stroke, cardiovascular disease. Well, that's true. It's very true. In fact, we don't have enough data yet. Um, a half or more of adults can have uh, inflammation of the gums, and clearly that um, improving cleaning up that gum damage has been shown to decrease uh, heart attack and stroke. Even in insurance companies, they pay less money. Well, what if, what if you're obese? Again, if you're obese, you've got the same things. You've got increased risk for heart attack, heart, heart disease, diabetes, dis, that big word again, dyslipidemia, bad uh, blood cholesterol values, high blood pressure. So who's right? And what's the original insult and injury here? Uh, this is another one, looking at it from the perspective of someone with obstructive sleep apnea. Again, is this starting to sound familiar? High, high blood pressure, atrial fibrillation, uh, diabetes, congestive heart failure, obesity. Uh, again, this is starting to sound like the old um, Buddhist story about the seven, six or seven blind men with an elephant. They, all, they walked up to the elephant. One man felt the trunk and said, oh, it's like a snake. Another felt the tail and said, no, no, it's like a rope. Another man, blind man felt the, uh, one of the legs and said, no, it's like the, an elephant's like the trunk of a tree. Um, and then there was another one who felt the, the belly, the side, and the chest and said, no, no, an elephant's big like, and flat like a wall. Uh... <clears throat> Then there are other people who, and I've mentioned these in, in several videos, who are saying, look, 
All of this is a biological process within ourselves. We're losing our ability to make certain key uh, enzymes for uh, particularly that focus around respiration, cell respiration, and therefore focused around the mitochondria and that generalized problems of cellular respiration is leading to cardiovascular disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, and, and uh, aging. Our friends Brad and Amy, uh, Brad Bale and Amy Donine, um have a slightly different perspective on it. In their courses, they teach root causes for inflammation. So these uh, things that are, look like apples or fruit are actually, when you look at them, um, symbols of inflamed arteries with the uh, inflammation in the artery wall. But as you get closer and start looking at uh, root causes, you get starting to sound, again, started sounding familiar a long time ago. High blood pressure. Um, they mentioned some other ones, like a, uh, LP little a, a uh, key cholesterol type of value that we've talked about in other videos. Um, insulin resistance. Um, some infectious diseases. Low vitamin D. Um, obstructive sleep apnea, genetics. So, again, <clears throat> what do we make with all this? Who's right? What's the original cause? I don't think that we know that yet. So what do we do about that? Well, there are some very practical things that we still need to do. We know that these things are correlated. Um, there are some practical things from a patient perspective and from a provider perspective. For example, we know that keeping our, our gums clean, uh, good dental hygiene, is a major improvement in risk for cardiovascular disease. We know that weight loss to an appropriate uh, BMI between 20 and 25 is a major creates major improvement in cardiovascular risk uh, uh, eating the right food. So there are a lot of things that we know improve all of these different risk factors for heart attack and disease. I've got uh, an example of some things that are a little bit more subtle. They're important for uh, providers, docs, and um, the healthcare team, but they're also important for a lot of patients too. And that has to do with insulin resistance and specific types of beta blockers and high blood pressure medications. Let's talk about those for just a second. Angiotensin converting uh, uh, inhibitors, ACE inhibitors. Remember we've talked about ramipril, uh, lisinopril before. Um, one thing we've talked about is that ACE inhibitors do uh, decrease inflammation. Uh, that's one of the recurring themes that you hear from uh, the Baildonin course. And it's one of the recurring things that you, you hear in the review of the literature. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that ACEs and ARBs both tend to improve insulin resistance. ACE inhibitors uh, improve it a little bit more than ARBs. Uh, ACE inhibitors in the high 20%, uh, ARBs in the low 20% in the uh, science that I looked at. So again, that's one of the reasons why ACE inhibitors are so important um, in addition to their impact on inflammation. So what about uh, beta blockers? This is something that's not, not that well known. Um, most cardiologists are aware. Um, a lot of internists are aware as well. Uh, one of the things that happens, though, is that we tend to forget um, Beta blockers have been found to be uh, to decrease risk for folks uh, post-event, like uh, uh, stents, uh, bypass, things like that, uh, infarcts. So most of our patients that are post-event come in on beta blockers. Uh, however, a lot of them come in on um, Toprol, uh, Toprol XL. In other words, the uh, basic uh, entry-level beta blocker, metoprolol. But as you see here, there, there is a significant difference in insulin resistance between carvedilol or Coreg 
and uh, metoprolol. So again, <clears throat> armed with the knowledge of the previous discussion that 70% of, of heart attack and stroke uh, risk is being generated by, or at least that's our estimate, a huge portion of heart attack and stroke risk is being ge generated by insulin resistance, then as providers and patients, we should be thinking, okay, maybe rather than, um, than your routine beta blocker, let's look a little bit deeper and see if this patient has insulin resistance. Quite often they do, and um, quite often there's an opportunity to improve things a little bit further by looking at something like uh, carvedilol as opposed to just uh, metoprolol. So you have several studies which back that up. Um, I won't, uh, actually uh, they've been found to be better in things like uh, uh, car carvedilol, a little bit better in things like uh, congestive failure as well. So again, <clears throat> what really causes heart attack? Which one of these risk uh, items, lifestyle, dental infection, um, obesity, uh, again, we don't know. Uh, is it a is it a common thing like uh, like the uh, cell respiration issues, the uh, mitochondrial theory? That's a very helpful theory for talking about what's going on, and it may be helpful for making some changes regarding diet and exercise. But the bottom line is, we need to know the correlation between all of these factors, and we need to be working on them and keep them in mind. Um, as we deal with heart attack and stroke prevention. Thank you.